Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Monday. It is October 19th. It is. Glad you are with us. We have a top stories coming up. We'll check in with Justin, see how the work week is looking after kind of a weird weather weekend around here. What is your state's most searched phobia? Of course, we all have <laughs> some fears, but phobias produce anxiety strong enough to affect someone's quality of life. Right, and there's a graphic you can see, of course, big state of tech at Texas right there. The fear is the outside. Yeah, which blows comments. my mind. The team at your local security came out with its annual report on each state's most searched phobia to find out which fear gets under people's skin the most. Yeah, and you, it's hard to see some of them with this graphic here because some of these states are kind of yeah. small. In this but graphic. that surprised me a little bit about Texas. Me too, me too. Uh, anthrop anthropophobia, fear of people, made up 22% of all phobia search volume, making the most search fear in the U.S. in 2020. Right, so search volume for anthropophobia increased by five times since 2019, and mm -hmm. it reached an ultimate high between April 19th and the 25th, and the study says that they can't say for sure, but they're fairly confident that COVID-19 played a role. And I'm thinking COVID plays a role in several of these, although yes. uh, in 2027 states, uh, Fear of flying was mm -hmm. the biggest phobia. Yeah, it said between rising COVID-19 cases and various travel bans, the travel industry and airlines especially have taken a massive hit. Some of the other ones on here, uh, like uh, Florida, uh, fear of viruses and germs. Of course, they've got a ton of COVID cases down there. The other ones are like fear of people. Yes. Other ones are make total sense, like uh, Montana, Fear of clowns. <laughs> North Dakota, <laughs> fear of holes. Yeah, well, this, this is interesting. California, home to Los Angeles, can you believe it? And a central hub for influencers was the only state to have the biggest fear of social media. Huh. I thought uh, that was Washington interesting. Washington State, fear of needles. Washington, uh, Hawaii, only state with a fear of heights. That's interesting, too. Huh with all the beautiful sights there. Is there a phobia to phobias? <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, there probably is, right? It's not on here, though. <laughs> Let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 across the world has passed 40 million. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. More than 1.1 million people have died due to the virus. The U.S. is averaging at least 55,000 new coronavirus cases per day. That's more than a 60 percent hike since mid-September. As of Sunday, only two states, Missouri and Vermont, are showing at least a 10 percent drop in new cases. The full Senate will reconvene today, two weeks after its return was delayed when two Republican senators tested positive for COVID-19. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the first order of business will be to vote on a targeted coronavirus relief plan. Early voting records are still being shattered across the country. More than 26 million voters have already cast their ballots in the presidential election. A hiker missing in Zion National Park in Utah for nearly two weeks has been found alive. The National Park Service said search and rescue teams found 38-year-old Holly Cordier yesterday after another park goer helped track her down. Demonstrators crowded the streets of France this weekend to mourn the death of a history teacher beheaded on Friday. Investigators believe he was killed because he organized a lesson on freedom of expression around the caricatures of the Prophet Muhammad. More evacuation orders are in effect in Colorado as several wildfires continue to burn. The Cameron Peak Fire has been burning for over two months and is the largest wildfire in the state's history. American Airlines plans to return the Boeing 737 MAX to service in December. That is if the Federal Aviation Administration recertifies the planes. NASA and Nokia are putting a 4G network on the moon. The network would support the wireless operation of Luna rovers on the moon service, navigation and streaming video. And that's today's 9 at 9. All right, tell them, Mark. Yeah, the answer is yes. There is a phobia to phobias. It's called phobophobia. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's like, what the, is the fear of fear? <laughs> of the 10 most common fears, fear of flying, fear of enclosed spaces, insects, snakes, fear of dogs, storms, needles. Any of those jump off the page for you? And you have a fear of mm. insects? Yeah. Snakes? Insects, yeah. probably more than snakes. I think it just hit me I, as a kid. I had astrophobia. It's Did a fear really? of storms. 
my parents grew up in the Midwest and oh. some of the worst thunderstorms I've seen in my life, summers, well, in that, Western Illinois. Well, that makes sense. Scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> well, I bet. And then became a weatherman at one point. Huh, isn't that funny? <laughs> anyway, outside with like him. You faced your fears. <laughs> I faced, I didn't yeah. conquer them, but I faced them. You faced them. Uh, that's, yeah. that's good stuff, Mark. All right, uh, let's go outside for you. There you see we've got uh, some cloud cover out there. Current conditions right now, it's, it's fairly warm. We're at 76 degrees here in San Antonio. And uh, temperatures are going to get warm this afternoon. We have a front that's on our doorstep. It just does not want to move in. Take a look at the current temperatures across the state. 51 in San Angelo, 45 Midland, 43 Lubbock, 39 in Amarillo. There's some wind chill values up there. We're not dealing with that. This front is pumping the brakes. It's not going to move any farther south. That means we stay in the heat all day long and really much of this week. Sad to say visible satellite picture shows that, that we've got some cloud cover out there to be off and on. There are a few showers out to the east. If we see any rain today, it's probably going to be east of I-35 and it's going to be very light. So the forecast calls for a high right around 88 degrees. It stays humid. Man, we need some relief. There is a little bit in the forecast, I think, as we get towards the end of the week. We're going to detail that forecast for you coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. We'll dive into your phobias later, Justin Horn. Right now, you're looking live at 410 at Northwest Military Highway over there by North Park, and traffic is uh, looking great in both eastbound and the westbound lanes. And top stories we are following today. A suspected burglar shot and killed after police say he broke into a Southside apartment overnight. Happened around 1130 last night at the flats at Big Tech's apartments in the 400 block of Blue Star. Police tell us a man heard loud banging, came out to his living room to investigate, and that's when he noticed an intruder on his balcony and called his neighbor for help. Officers say the man then ran out of the door. The neighbor fired multiple shots at the intruder, killing him. Police tell us that intruder was a man in his late 20s or early 30s, but we are still waiting to learn his name. It's a miracle. Those are the words of a West Side man who says his mother escaped serious injury when an SUV plowed into their home late last night. Daniel Garcia says his 77-year-old mother was asleep on the couch in their living room when the vehicle crashed into their home at the corner of San Joaquin and Monterey Streets. Garcia says he heard what sounded like an explosion around 1130 last night. He said he went downstairs and found his mother screaming under a pile of debris. Police tell us neighbors had to help her out of the home through a window. I mean, unbelievable. Look at that video. Garcia says his mother only suffered minor injuries, but police say the driver of the SUV was not so lucky. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police say the driver also hit a pole, took out a neighbor's fence, and tore up the Garcia's front yard. Early voting continues this week in Texas and here in Bear County. Polls will be open a little later to make sure everyone can cast their ballot. There are 48 voting sites across the county. During early voting, you can vote at any one of them. Polls will be open from 8 to 8 through Saturday and then noon to 6 on Sunday. Then next week for the final week of early voting, polls will remain open through 10 p.m. Early voting wraps up October 30th. And as you probably know by now, Election Day itself is November 3rd. As of yesterday, the Bear County Elections Department says more than 200,000 people have already cast their ballots. That does not include mail-in ballots. For a closer look at some of the busiest and slowest polling sites in Bear County, you can just head over to ksat.com vote. There you will also find a sample ballot and everything else you need to know before you head to the polls. Once you go vote, don't forget to send us a pic, whether it's a selfie or your voting sticker. You can post your picture on our community gallery. Head to the Vote 2020 section of ksat.com. In your morning headlines, we have training video of the suspects in that alleged kidnapping plot for the governor of Michigan and a guy sets a police cruiser on fire. A world record for walking on a rope and a happy ending for an endangered lemur. We say good Monday morning to Mr. David Sears. A little guy got out, just thought he was going to run around the uh, playground for a little while and he finally got caught and sent back to zoo. Busted. Yeah. So we'll have that for you in just a second. Hey, you are looking at some video of a training exercise that was played in court in Michigan that shows several men accused of working out their plan to capture and kill the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. A 14th suspect is now facing charges in the plot. The video is from the U.S. Attorney's Office. The FBI discovered that two of the suspects actually had arsenals of weapons in their basements. There is video of a suspect, Adam Fox, appearing to speed reload his AR-15 and then pull a gun from his holster. This was in the basement of a vacuum shop in Grand Rapids. The owner of the store wanted Fox out of there since he noticed he was buying a lot of weapon accessories.
He was buying more like attachments for like an AR-15 and he was buying like food. And I'm not stupid, I was in the Marine Corps. So that, I told him he had to go. The FBI says they also infiltrated encrypted chats and text chains laying out the plot. In one encrypted chat, the suspects allegedly used code names for Governor Whitmer. No portion of the plot was ever carried out. All right, let's take it to Seattle. You're going to be seeing several different screens here in just a second. This is a pretty disturbing story. It starts with Seattle police body cam footage. The officer responding to a call for a man with a piece of wood on fire in an alley. The officer is Caleb Pomazan. He got there. The guy threw this burning stick into the officer's cruiser. Pomazan fired at the suspect, didn't hit him. Other officers arrived, were able to chase the suspect down and arrest him. Officer Pomazan suffered minor burns. The cruise cruiser ended up being fully engulfed. All right, so what did you do this weekend? This guy decided he's going to walk across a rope strung between two lights above a stadium in Germany. Jens Decky is a daredevil. He is walking 750 feet across this slack line that is about 240 feet in the air. He calls it a sport, although there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of competition during this walk because nobody else is doing it, just him. The line is 25 millimeters wide. That's it. It's flat. He says the hardest part is keeping your concentration. He made it, didn't fall, although he did have a safety line. So is that the sport? You put a safety line on it? It's also a phobia, David. Oh, uh, is that? <laughs> oh, you think? That's scared of ropes. He's scared of heights. All, kinds of oh all that stuff. Finally, a little lemur decided it was time to break out of the zoo and see what the other half lives like. Yes, that is an endangered lemur. His name is Mackie. He ended up in the playground of a school. He got loose from the San Francisco Zoo. He was hopping around all over the playground structures and finally ended up hanging out in one of those plastic playhouses, little James Trin was the first to spot Mackie. What did the lemur look like? A lemur. Way black and white. I like the way they look. <laughs> because they actually think that Mackie got out, of, did not get out on his own from the way it looks right now. He was taken from the zoo and then maybe just kind of dropped off. He's actually 21 years old, so they're keeping an eye on him since that was for a lemur, that was a pretty stressful outing that he had. So they got, a, they, they got him back to the zoo, and they're, they're keeping an eye on him right now. So. David, in case you were wondering, there is a phobia Here we go. for lemurs. Okay, can, what is that? Can you, can you guess what it is? With, uh, lemur phobia. It is. It lemur is exactly phobia. right. It is. Really? You nailed it. <laughs> What's the phobia for heights? Uh, and, is and, it acrophobia, yeah. if and, I remember right? I don't and know. A, and a thin rope. I then wrote I don't know. Um, Robophobia. I don't know. No. That one may not be quite as obvious. Hey, what's no. the phobia for losing all the time? I'm sure. I don't know, but one. you're going to tell us a little bit about that, right? Pick that one up. We'll see what we're we'll going to look all of these up. That's a tease for sports, isn't it? Exactly. Oh, Thank you, David. No. Right now, 9, 11, 76 degrees, still ahead on DMSA at 9. A tattoo artist in North Carolina is helping survivals heal after battling breast cancer. Why some of her patients say her work has given them the confidence to move on. A great weekend for A&M fans, not so great for Texans fans. David will be back to break down the weekend in sports later in the newscasts. And the startup community is so important to San Antonio, but during this pandemic, they've had to pivot. And right now we are adapting during startup week. Max Massey, I'll explain right after the break. And welcome back. It is 915. The pandemic has caused a lot of industries to pivot, one of which is the startup community. In past years, the community has helped dozens of businesses come to fruition. This week is Startup Week and Max Massey joins us live from Geekdom downtown. Max, what are some of the changes we should expect? Good morning, guys. Well, one of the first changes is the format. You said Startup Week. It's really Startup Month now and because of this pandemic, everything is virtual. Joined here with Ty with two win. So question. How have you seen the startup community build and grow through your time here in Geekdom? Yeah, so I think that um, you'll see companies actually form here and grow too big and have to leave the space. And then, you know, I think what's so appealing about Geekdom is that if you're looking for collaboration, whether it's between your team or between two different organizations, um, Geekdom is the place to do it. And we know that more than 50 businesses have signed up for Startup Week. 
this year, what should they expect? I think they should expect some pretty serious and awesome talks um, to speak very broadly. And it can range from anything between cybersecurity, female entrepreneurship, um, med, biomed, uh, robotics. So whatever you think or however you want to start your business, we have business fundamentals. We really cover a lot of things. And so I think it's just a great resource and hubs for anyone who is looking to start their own business or looking to grow their business. All right, too. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. And coming up at 930, we're going to go over how important the startup community is to our local economy. Guys. Thank you, Max. We look forward to that. Time for a look at possible startup careers in meteorology. Yes. Yeah, we do have a junior meteorologist this morning. This is Owen. He's four years old. He loves talking about Earth and all the planets, and he's interested in learning about the solar system. Does a great job. Let's take a listen. Hello, San Antonio. My name's Owen. Here's a forecast for the next few days. In the high 80s. Thursday will be as breezy as well. Friday will be most weak wet. There's a 20% chance of rain. Whee! Friday is mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Saturday will be work week cloudy. Have a great weekend. Awesome job, <laughs> Owen. How sweet. Love Wishing this. Props. A happy birthday. Quality work. Great props. Yeah. A plus on the props. Happy birthday to mom. Yeah. Yeah, happy I birthday, loved, mom. I loved everything about that, Owen. You did a great job, my friend. You are destined to be a scientist someday, so thank you so much for sending that in. We appreciate it. We still have a few more slots left if you want to send in your video of your junior meteorologist. We'd love to see it. Let's jump into the forecast and talk about these temperatures. Boy, what a change. Uh, we have 30s and 40s up in North Texas and 70s down here in South Texas. And I would normally tell you this front's going to keep trucking south. We're going to get the cooler air here. Not the case. This front has pumped the brakes. It has stopped. It's almost pulling up stationary now. And we are not going to feel the cooler air. Not today, not tomorrow. In fact, we'll probably have to wait until Friday even Saturday before we get some cooler air back in here. Uh, but it's pretty chilly up to the north. There are wind chills this morning and uh, some pretty chilly readings. Uh, there's a look at the dew points too. The air is really dry up there. We're still in the humidity. Dew points still in the 70s in many spots here across South Texas. We're looking at a dew point of 71 here in town, 71 in New Braunfels, 68 in Kerrville. So it's going to stay pretty sticky today. Places like Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, Kerrville, this front may try to sink a little bit farther to the south. You may feel some of the cooler air, but not much. And we are not expecting it here in San Antonio. Take a look at the dew points this week. They're going to stay pretty elevated in the upper 60s, mid 60s, all the way through the end of the week. So that's also going to lend itself to some of those morning clouds, maybe some morning drizzle each and every day and there's some pretty humid afternoons. Here's the situation right now. We've got mostly cloudy skies, 76. Southeasterly winds at about eight miles per hour. And you see all the cloud cover here. There's quite a bit of it. Uh, it's cloudy from Rock Springs, Uvalde, Eagle Pass. A few breaks from Catula to Pleasanton and Beeville. And then you find a few showers off to the east. These are really light. They're moving pretty quickly. But we can't rule out a little bit of rain today for some of our eastern counties. If you see anything, uh, it's not going to add up to much. And boy, we need the rain too. It's uh, not a great situation here. When we're talking about the drought, it just keeps building on us, more or less. This does show a couple showers developing by 5 o'clock east of San Antonio. Rain chances here 10% or less here in town. We may start off with a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning. Clouds will build back in. And then just like today, we'll go partly cloudy by the afternoon. Here's a look at the month in review so far. Obviously, we're only through uh, the 19th here today, but uh, we've picked up only three hundredths of an inch. We're about two and a half inches below average for the month of October. October can be a good month for us, but that's just not the case here in 2020. Uh, it is looking very dry and that three tenths of an inch or three hundredths of an inch, I should say, that we got was just from a little bit of drizzle in the morning. That's it. Here's the setup. You see the front, a lot of snow up across uh, parts of the Midwest and uh, Northern Plains, and it's cold up there. 24 Bismarck. It's 18 right now in Cup Bank. That cold air is just not does not have enough of a push to make it all the way down here into deep south Texas. So the forecast for today up around 88.
partly cloudy skies and the extended forecast will go 87 tomorrow with some morning clouds and drizzle. That'll be the case really all week long. 86 Wednesday, 88 Thursday, 89 Friday. There's our cool down. We do get a front. Looks like Friday evening that may knock us down into the low 80s on Saturday. Clear us out a little bit. It may be knocked down the humidity, but uh, this front is just teasing us, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it. We'll take what we can get. Yeah. Thanks, okay. Justin. Yep. Right now it's 921. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. A woman in North Carolina is giving breast cancer survivor tattoos over their scars. How she hopes this will help them heal. Nine twenty four. Welcome back. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and chances are at least one person in our lives has been affected by the disease. As Kendall McGee with WECT in Wilmington, North Carolina reports, a tattoo artist has found a unique way to give survivors a way to heal. Janine LaCourt is an artist. Painting was an early passion for her, but after her sister-in-law was diagnosed with breast cancer, she put down um, the paintbrush. The From my very first tattoo, I knew this is what I should be doing with my life. Today, she walks the line between medicine and art, specializing in 3D nipple tattoos for people after breast cancer and scar camouflage. And I understand how much weight a scar can hold. Um, sometimes you don't even realize what it's doing to you emotionally um, until you can have a resolution that helps hide it. The healing is more than skin deep. Her patients say LaCourt's work has given them the confidence to move on, date again after a mastectomy, and apply for their dream jobs. As much as I love doing this for people, I would love to never have to do this ever again if it meant nobody else had cancer. Behind the pink ribbons that surface every October is a poignant reminder to talk about prevention and the importance of catching it early. You can't tie a pretty pink ribbon around what cancer is. Um, but it is a chance to openly talk about something that affects every person because literally everyone knows one person at least that has gone through breast cancer. Whether it's a cancer survivor or someone looking to get rid of scars from accidents, surgeries, or self-harm, LaCourt says okay. she keeps in touch with each of her patients. Okay. You're, they're part of my family. They're part of my friends now. Um, because I helped them through that journey. You know, I took them past, past the hard into what's the next phase of their life. And it's a powerful to be a part of that. In Hampstead, Kendall McGee. And time now, it's 926. There's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Is it a bear? Is it a feral hog? San Antonio police found quite the unexpected animal in park trails near Mission and Spada over the weekend. So what is it? Eric Hernandez joins us with the answer. Interesting. And the Houston Texans came so close, but ultimately fell short against the Tennessee Titans. David will be back to talk about that, plus a preview of tonight's Cowboys game against the Cardinals. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And welcome back. It's 930. The Houston Texans still can't seem to catch a break. But good news for Justin Horn. The Aggies coming out on top for the second weekend in a row. Yeah. David Sears back to talk weekend sports. And oh, that was tough to watch yesterday with Houston. That started with the coin toss. It was just better than a happy Justin Horn. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, yeah, double check your microphone real quick. As I, as I was saying, there's nothing better than a Right. Okay. We'll that in just a second. So let, let's we start go. with the. We Texans. got you. So they're down, and they make a nice comeback, and it looks like, hey, you know what? They might be able to pull this thing out on the road against the Tennessee Titans. There's JJ Watt <laughs> with one of those strip sacks. Yeah. Texans recover. Deshaun Watson had a huge day yesterday. 335 yards, and this is his one of four touchdown passes he threw. And look at this one down there to Fuller. It's a beauty. Nah, they didn't say it was a touchdown. So, so the Texans scored a touchdown on the next play. They got the lead. And Romeo Cornell, this is the controversy from yesterday. He decides to go to two instead of go to the field or the extra point, And they didn't get the two. So now with four seconds left, there's your, uh, there's your game tying touchdown. And we're going, to, we're going to extras. We're going to extra innings. And this is not good. This is Derrick Henry. And look at him just bull his way in for the touchdown. So that was the big controversy after the game. Should Romeo Cornell had gone for the extra point instead of the two-point conversion? And he says he was trying to put the game away. That's why he went for the two-point conversion. And they end up losing in overtime. 
the Titans are still undefeated, believe it or not. But Texas took them all the way down to the end, took them to overtime, and they ended up losing 42-36. So what, what a bad, what a bad game. All right, so the Cowboys tonight, this is Andy Dalton's first start as a Cowboy quarterback against the mm -hmm. Cardinals. And believe it or not, the Cowboys right now are leading the division. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is how bad the division is. So Philadelphia is 1-4-1. One, one. Washington and the Giants are like 1-5. Yep. And the Cowboys are 2-3. and three. So even if they lose, they'll be right there with Philly. But if they win tonight, they're 3-3. Three and three. That's the best record in, that, in the NFC East is 3-3, three <laughs> three, six games. So we'll see. But he's going to have to have a lot of help tonight. Zeke Elliott's going to have to do something tonight other than just, you know, a couple of carries and some drop passes. He's going to he's gonna have to step up. They've got to have uh, – like Cooper and some of these other guys, Gallup, they got to make some. They got to make some catches. They got to help Andy Dalton out. And they talk was all week was where they're going to change the offense around because Dak's no longer the quarterback at least for the rest of the season because, you know, Dalton is not Dak Prescott obviously. But uh, we'll have to see if they do much different in the uh, in the offensive scheme as they get ready to take on. But by, by the way, this is a double header tonight. It's the Chiefs and the Bills. Yeah, like for today, the Cowboys. Yeah, so, well, we've got the matinee, weird. and then we've got so, the main yeah. show. Although uh, Bills and Chiefs is going to be awesome. Yeah, well, you know, you got you got Patrick Mahomes. Come on now. Yeah. All right, here you go, Justin. You ready? I'm going to give this all to you, man. The Aggies got a lot of attention this week since the Longhorns didn't play, <laughs> and yes, A&M comes through on the road. First, last couple weeks ago, last week it was Florida, fourth ranked, and then yesterday it was. Mississippi State Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. What happened to Mike Leach? He won the first game against LSU and, you know, can't do anything. So, all right, Justin, tell us about this. What happened yesterday or Saturday? It's just complete domination, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, editorial no. bias was, whatsoever. So, so now, so the, so wait, let, let's look for it. The Aggies win. So, so give us your scenario on how the Aggies could actually be in the postseason tournament. Well, I'm just saying that their schedule is a little favorable uh -huh. as we go down the line. And, you know, Alabama and Georgia got to play each other again. Uh huh. <laughs> you want them to win out. You could say it. So if, well, the yeah, Aggies, so if the Aggies win out, you think they have a chance to be one of the final four? I'm not jinxing them. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm saying the you're asking a That's fan. If the Aggies yes. win out. Go ahead. You can say it. I mean, there's a, I think Come there's on, a you don't chance, that. but I'm not going to say it. Nope. Is that another phobia or something? You, can, you don't want to say Probably. Okay. Hey, listen, Probably. when you're an Aggie fan, you've, you've been down this road before. We don't. I like that, though. I understand. He's, hey, he's got I it all. You. He's got it all. He's got the whole scenario written down at his desk. And, I, and the Aggies can be in the in the tournament. And real quick, no, we're, World Series starts tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Outside with live cam, we're going to kick it right back over to Justin Horn. <laughs> <laughs> to talk more about Aggies. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll push the Aggies aside for now. Okay, outside, we've got uh, cloudy skies, at least mostly cloudy. A little bit of fog, too. Uh, we check in on the pollen count. Uh, molds in the moderate category, that's about where it was yesterday, but ragweed has fallen off a little bit, so some good news there. It's just those two in today's pollen count, 630 for mold. And uh, looking at temperatures, 76 at the airport. Notice junction though, 63. The front is through junction, but it hasn't made any more movement to the south, so it's going to pretty much stall out right where you see it. All the cool airs to the north, we're going to stay in the warm and humid conditions. Amarillo still in the 30s this morning. It's chilly in the Texas Panhandle. Normally, we'd tell you that front would sweep on through. That would typically what would happen in October, but it is 2020, so a little different. Uh, we've got uh, clouds trying to drift in uh, from the south, so cloudy skies, Rock Springs, Lake Eddy Valley, mostly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. Forecast calls for a high ride around 88 this afternoon. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15. Guys. Thank you, Justin. And taking a look at with Transguide, there's 35 at Randolph. Things looking pretty smooth right now. And Startup Week is underway here in San Antonio, and not only is it virtual this year, but it's also going on all month long. Max Massey joins us once again from over at Geekdom downtown. Max, uh, what are some of the events that people can expect? Good morning, guys. It is all virtual, and as Stephanie mentioned, it is a month long. Now, some of the events are panels, guest speakers. I'm joined here with Dax. So what should people expect this month? Uh, a lot of learning, a lot of great conversation, a lot of collaboration. That's kind of the keystones of what we do in the startup ecosystem here in San Antonio. Uh, we brought together some really wonderful speakers on uh, diversity and inclusion, um, creative media, you know, conquering the online world, and also just good old-fashioned business fundamentals as well. Um, 
building a startup and building a business anywhere, even if it's a great place like San Antonio, it's difficult and it takes some time. So this is a chance for people to connect with peers, find mentors or really valuable resources that they can use to develop their business. People might hear the word startup and think, oh, it's just a buzzword, blah, blah, blah. But it's so important for the economy of San Antonio. That's correct. Um, I think it's hugely important. As we pivot out of COVID, uh, we're making a lot of investments in our workforce development and our economic development efforts. And I think at the forefront of that is how we invest in technology and in our startup communities. We're seeing so much growth from Port San Antonio. Jim and his team have made some wonderful investments. They're attracting real companies with real tech jobs at wonderful working rates that are gonna really lift the San Antonio economy. We need more of that investment and more of those opportunities. So it's really important that San Antonio Startup Week and our ecosystem have a platform uh, to broadcast to all those entrepreneurs or startup businesses or even maybe a little bit bigger than startups to see just how passionate and capable the citizens we have here in San Antonio are in embracing technology and that startup vision. Perfect, Dex. Thank you so much. So there you have it, guys. Foot in the door for so many of these businesses and could be huge for the future of our economy. Steph, Mark. Very helpful. Thank you, Max. Time right now is 938, 76 degrees. You're watching TMSA at 9. So how would you like to host a private screening party at an AMC theater? Our Erica Hernandez will join us from home to tell us how you can do it and how much it will cost you. That's coming up next. Several stories trending on KSAT.com this morning, including reports of a possible bear on the south side. Erica Hernandez joining us live from her home with the latest. Good morning, Erica. Hi, Erica. Hey, guys. Good morning. Well, I'll get to that story in just a bit. But first, Disney Plus subscribers may be noticing a new advisory message when they watch classic movies. The advisory will be before movies that show negative depictions, mistreatment of people or cultures. This comes after Walt Disney Company recently announced its Stories Matter initiative, which is part of its ongoing commitment to diversity and inclusion. Some of the movies that will get the advisory include Dumbo, Peter Pan, Aristocats, and Swiss Family Robinson. Part of the advisory reads, quote, rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. And speaking of Disney Plus, guys, I don't know if you guys are Mandalorian fans, but season two starts up next week. Oh, that's right. We are. Yeah. We are huge fans. Yeah, and we can't stuff. wait. That's exciting. Now, speaking of movies and shows, starting at $99, you can host a private screening party at an AMC theater. The entertainment company is making auditoriums available for up to 20 people to enjoy a movie. You can even rent a theater here in San Antonio at the AMC River Center 11. If interested, you have to go to AMC's website and fill out the event's inquiry form. A representative will then contact you to assist you in planning your private get-together. We have information on how to rent a theater on our website right now and that's the one thing i've missed so much about 2020 not going to the movies and seeing a new movie not as frequently or, or at least not a brand new movie right and i was yeah, telling I, steph i don't know the theaters right now if it's not a new movie right and i was telling steph and justin during the break that when i've been during the pandemic there's been so few people in there it's almost like i paid to have it rented out and have a private screen <laughs> It's all but for you. Thing is that there's more of those pop-in drive-ins, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, finally, to that bear story, San Antonio police on Saturday started receiving several reports of a possible bear sighting on the park trails just south of Mission Espada. Police started to search the area and thought maybe it was a feral hog and not a bear. Well, it wasn't neither. It was a large, black, pot-bellied pig. Looks like from the photo, it was just taking a break and laying around. Nobody was hurt by the pig, and police waited for it to walk away from the trail before leaving the scene. Police did say, if you do see a pot-bellied pig, just leave it alone. However, if you do see a bear, report it to local authorities. Um, oh, my goodness. Definitely not yeah. a bear. The giveaway was the snout. <laughs> 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 I, I but if you see from a distance just laying down, I would like, it's black, yeah, it's that's, just chilling. I can't really true. see it up close. I was going to say like a, a few years ago, and I, maybe it was three years ago, I did a story about a pig that was dumped on a trail. It, it was, his name was Buttercup. Was that Buttercup? <laughs> no, Butter, oh. no, Buttercup was different. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Buttercup is safe. Well, at least the last time we checked on him. So. so at least it wasn't a bear. 
No, no. <laughs> right. Well, if you're in your national days of the week, today you get a little deep. Today is Evaluate Your Life Day. Oh, oh tomorrow. No. Jeez. I don't want that on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> told you it gets deep on a Monday. Tomorrow is International Chef Day. Wednesday is Pumpkin Cheesecake Day. Thursday is National Nut Day. Friday is National Boston Cream Pie Day. Saturday is National Food Day. And Sunday, it's National Mother-in-Law Day. So do not forget your mother-in-laws on Sunday. Oh, that's N nice. Noted. Yeah, noted. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Justin's back at 945 and uh, earlier today, Mike's main theme for the early edition of GMSA was summer in October. Mm. Pretty much. Uh, it's been pretty fascinating in this October. It's usually a good month for us rainfall wise. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't materialized. We have this front that's just come to our doorstep and then stopped. And it doesn't look like we're going to get any rain from that. And we're not going to get cooler temperatures either. Just full of good news here. Let's take a look at the time lapse. You can see we had the clouds this morning. There was some drizzle out there this morning, some patchy fog here and there, but the uh, ceilings have lifted. We're at 78 degrees now. Southeasterly wind at about 10 miles per hour, so that's still pumping in quite a bit of moisture. Dew point is at 72. We had some of that fog, as I mentioned. It really has dissipated, though. So places like Gonzales, New Braunfels, we did see a little bit of lower visibility this morning. A lot of improvement just within the last hour. There's a look at the dew points, and these numbers are high. We're talking low 70s here in San Antonio. That puts us in the oppressive category. Yeah, these numbers will fall off a little bit during the afternoon, but it's still going to be sticky, and it just is not going to feel like fall around here at all. Look at the current temperatures. 78 here in San Antonio, 80 in Pleasanton. The one spot on our map that is behind the front junctions, it's 63, and they're just on the other side. The really cool stuff is up there in North Texas, uh, West Texas, Midlands at 45, 47 in Abilene, 55 in Dallas. So this front is through the Metroplex, but out ahead of it, still very warm and very humid. It is trying to move a little bit farther to the south, but I just don't think it'll make it here to San Antonio. It may make it into parts of the hill country briefly before it lifts back to the north and everyone's back in the warm air by uh, tomorrow afternoon. Visible satellite picture here shows quite a bit of cloud cover tracking through. We've got a few breaks here around Bear County. Clouds are thicker out west, and then you'll find more breaks as you go east. You'll also see a few showers there right along the coast, Victoria to Beeville. It's possible our eastern counties could see a stray shower today, but it won't amount to much. These are not significant rain showers at all, uh, and so there is an outside chance of that, and the computer models show that. I'd say a 10 to 20 percent chance if you're east of I-35. And then as we go into tomorrow morning, it's basically going to be a repeat. We'll see some more drizzle, some low cloudiness, maybe a little bit of fog here and there. And uh, actually, that'll be the case through much of this week. Pretty similar weather pattern each and every day through Friday. I want to show you the uh, tropics real quick. We do have a new tropical depression, 27. Winds are at 35 miles per hour. This is it right here. Uh, the track takes it towards Bermuda as a Category 1 hurricane. Winds at 85 miles per hour by this weekend. Shouldn't affect the United States, I don't think. Uh, but it just is another in a long line of storms we've had this year. Epsilon would be the name if it got named. Then next would be Zeta. If we do get to Zeta, by the way, we would eclipse 2005, the number of named storms, most since we've been doing this sort of thing, naming these storms. So just pretty incredible. Here's forecast for today. 81 degrees noontime. We'll be up around 86 by 2 o'clock. 88 for a high. Partly cloudy skies, we'll call it. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15. 87 on Tuesday, 86 Wednesday, actually very consistent this week. Upper 80s, close to 90 by Friday, but we will get a frontal battery coming through. That does cool us down for the weekend. Low 80s, looks like Saturday and mid 80s on Sunday. Hey, low 80s, we'll take it. It's something. It's something. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Just about 10 till 10. We'll be right back. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. This year, Day of the Dead celebrations are going virtual, and they're gonna be using all new enhanced augmented reality features. And to talk more about that, we're here with Chef Johnny Hernandez, the man behind the celebrations <laughs> here in San Antonio this year. Thank you so much for having me out here. Oh, it's great to be here. Oh, now, welcome. The augmented reality, that's what can, right. when you go on Snapchat, you go on Instagram, mm -hmm. right, using your phone, and you can put like funny little hats on or something like that, right? <laughs> but how is that going to be incorporated into the Day of the Dead celebrations this Well, year? obviously, a lot of this creative uh, work we're doing is driven by safety, right? So I know that some of the fun things that we were talking about are the filters that we're creating for Day of the Dead. You know, we have a, obviously a, a very strong partnership with HEB where we're working with their makeup department and we're showing people how to paint Katrina's and it's all virtual on QR codes. 
but the filters have been fun because they've been sending me examples of them and, you know. <laughs> Day of the Dead is going to be a fun uh, virtual uh, experience this year. Now, uh, the QR codes that you had just mentioned, right. uh, what is that, where are they going to be and how can people use them? Right. So there's several places uh, within the entire Day of the Dead project where they'll be used. I think one of the most important ones is our River Parade program. We're going to share that all through KSAT and all the different uh, avenues and connections we're making through the community and organizations. Watch the parade on, on KSAT and know what each barge's theme is. So that's a really important one. The second one that, uh, that we've had a lot of fun organizing is uh, an altar QR code. So we have altar kits that we've created that we had made in Michoacan. That QR code will tell you everything about the altar. It breaks it down, the different elements. What's beautiful about all these, uh, these augmented reality uh, and this technology is we created characters. So you're gonna see these characters come to life through these QR codes, through these animations, and they're all, it's all about education and making it fun for the families. And Day of the Dead, at the very core of what it is, it's a cultural celebration that really is a part of what San Antonio, where we come from. Good morning. Hey there, guys. Coming up on live, we chat with Sarah Gilbert. We'll talk with her about the Connors and its highly anticipated third season. See you soon on live. And it's already 80 degrees. We'll be on our way to 88 this afternoon. Warm and humid. Front stays to our north. It's warm and humid most of the week. Cold front does cool us down by the weekend. If you have a spare 50 bucks from li lying around, the Spurs Coyote can deliver some Halloween goodies. Yeah, and it can be lots of fun. So you can, like, register for that now. This is the Spurs Coyote delivering Halloween goodies right to your door, and it's all part of his candy drop event. So from actually this started on Friday you could from Friday until October 23rd you can register to receive a goodie bag at your household $50 per household got to make that clear it will include one goodie bag for one child any additional goodie bags $10 each the event is presented by cinnamon toast crunch Churros. And the costumes and traditional Halloween decorations are also encouraged because after all, it is Halloween. So that'd be one way to celebrate. Yeah, visits from Coyote, first come, first serve basis. Uh, outside a 30 mile radius from the AT&T Center will be accommodated as much as possible. So to learn much more about the event, we have a link to the Spurs website on ours. Well, just look for this article again. Spurs Coyote can deliver Halloween goodies right to your door this Halloween. And if you're thinking about maybe surprising a family, like, hey, they have kids, let's surprise them with the coyote. That'd be a, a nice idea. But maybe you should tell them because they're like, why is the coyote, why is the coyote at my, my door? door? <laughs> and by the way, that goodie bag filled with Spurs swag ah. and sweet treats in tow. Yeah, keep that in mind. Have a great day, you guys.